Hello everyone, this is Aspen Jarvis and I'm here with Zoe Stone. We are doing our presentation for Communication 498 of our team teaching on Theory of Group. So an overview of Theory of Group, here is a quote from Little John and Foss. So group organization community problem solving is a creative threefold process of one, gathering info from experts, two, testing that info in daily experiences, and three, developing integrative solutions that meet a variety of interests rather than selecting from among competing interests. So we're going to go through each one of the traditions and how theory of group applies to that. So within the socio-psychological tradition, there is Robert Bale's interaction process analysis where he says, theory of small group communication that aims to explain the kind of messages people exchange in groups, the ways the messages shape the roles and personalities of members, and the ways the messages affect the character of the group. So within Bale's theory, there's two general classes of communication behavior. There's socio-emotional behaviors, which is seeming friendly, showing tension, and dramatizing. And the second behavior is task behaviors, which is suggestions, opinions, and information. Um, Bales also found that within groups are two leaders. There's a task leader, which facilitates and coordinates the task relation, comments and directs energy towards getting the job done. The socio-emotional leader works towards improved relations in the group and focuses on interactions in positive and negative sectors. So next we're moving on to cybernetic tradition. So in cybernetic traditions pertaining to group, theory, it says that groups are part of a larger system of interacting for forces. So the first thing we are looking at is bona fide group. So this is a bona fide group is a naturally occurring group. In a sense, all groups, unless they are artificially created in a laboratory, are bona fide because all groups are part of a larger system. So two characteristics make up this group. They are permeable, so they are always fluid and always changing. They all, there are permeable boundaries and they are interdependent with the environment. And then it also suggests that group, the group is always interdependent with its environment and the environment influences, influences it and the group affects relevant context in the way it works. And the environment um, pertains to the system of interacting groups, the groups, how the groups communicate and they coordinate their actions negotiate different group responsibilities, and interpret meaning of intergroup relationships. Next, staying within that cybernetic tradition, we're going to look at the input process output model. So this is the factors that affect the group, which are the inputs, and what within the group, which is the process, and the results, which is the output. So that is the overview of the input process output model. It also, so an example of this would be a study group. So members bring info and attitudes about the course to the group. The group talks, which can make it a higher or lower grade in the course. And the output of the group provides feedback that affects the grade content and the feelings about the group. The group rewards can be positive or negative depending on the interpersonal reward and the, how successful the project is, that, which is the task reward, and the fun involved is the interpersonal reward, so those can all depend. Next is Fisher's interaction analysis, which is by Aubrey Fisher. So it focuses on interacts, can be classified in content dim dimension and relationship dimension. So within this, there is decision emergence which is compromised of four different phases. So there is the orientation phase, the conflict emergence, and reinforcement. So within the orientation phase, this is your when you're getting acquainted, getting clarification, expression of viewpoints, and there tends to be more agreeing in this stage. Then there's the conflict phase, which is solidifying attitudes, polarization, more disagreement can happen, and persuasion attempts may lead to forming co coalitions. The emergence phase is when cooperation happens, dissolving of the coalitions. You tend to be less defensive. Group decision emerges, emerges and ambiguity tends to occur. The last phase is reinforcement, 
which is the decisions of the group solidify, group comes to an agreement and comments are positive and favorable and ambiguity disappears. So the socio-cultural tradition is what we're going to talk about next, and within that is the symbolic interpretive perspective. Um, Little John and Foss say that it focuses on ways in which groups create environments, internal states, and products through symbol use, how members talk, nonverbal symbols they use, how they interact and construct realities within the group exists and works. Um, so the more... Um, where am I? I need to pause it. So this also focuses on the group structure and group tasks. When a group works on tasks, it creates structure, which affects how it manages tasks. Um, within this tradition is also the structuration theory, which is general processes which groups create structure with attention to task. Um, and it's by Anthony Giddens, and it's human action is the process of producing and reproducing various social systems through ordinary practice. When we communicate with one another, it creates structure, which is patterns of rules and norms. Um, so three variables within this uh, are objective task characteristics, which are as attributes of task, group task characteristics, which vary group to group based on experience, and group structural characteristics, which are cohesion, power, and conflict. Um, another section within this is functional theory, which is the way in which groups make decisions between quality of communication and group output while putting focus on the connection between the two. So Dewey's six steps within this are expressing difficulty, defining the problem, analyzing, suggesting solutions, comparing alternatives and testing them, and implementing the best solution. And a last section within this tradition is groupthink theory, which is too much cohesion in a group. It is likely when cohesion is high and there are structural faults such as insulation, inadequate counsel, poor decision making, and closed mindedness. Ways to overcome this are to encourage everyone to express their ideas, set up policy making groups, divide into subgroups, invite outsiders to bring in new ideas, and assign people to be devil's advocate. So the last thing we are focusing on within this is critical tradition. So within cr critical tradition we have feminist cr critique of small group theory. So this is by Bales and Bales has that distinction of task and socio-emotional effort and he says it's too arbitrary and he suggests examining assumptions about sex and gender in small groups. So some final points about this chapter are that groups can't be separated from context in which they work. Effective groups accomplish tasks and build relationships. Process and structure are tied together. Effective group work requires attention to quality of communication and creative thinking and critical thinking.